want to talk more about the weekend box office. Also want to talk about the strike and how it's impacting a whole number of films and entire slates, really. Matt Bellany uh, is here, founding partner of Puck News, has a fascinating new uh, newsletter out. Matt, it's great to see you. Let's talk, the, let's, let's start with the Disney picture and, and how much of this is about what's happening inside Disney, the creative juices inside of Disney, the sort of seasonality of where we are, the idea that there couldn't be promotion because of the actor strike. Tell me about the mix here. Well, I think it's all a factor, but honestly, this movie just got run over by the Barbenheimer phenomenon. I mean, it's funny because we're used to in the past all the other studios bowing down before Disney with their big summer movie tent poles, and people would just scurry and get out of the way of the Disney movies. Now, one after another this summer, the Disney movies have sort of been upstaged by other movies. We saw it earlier this summer where Little Mermaid didn't quite perform overseas like it was supposed to. We saw it with the Indiana Jones movie where that was supposed to do huge numbers with a $300 million budget. Now we're seeing it with Haunted Mansion, which was sort of a B-level franchise for Disney, but it was still expected to do pretty big business. And now you've got Barbie and even Oppenheimer just running circles around Disney. But, but how much, again, though, how much do you look at that and say that there was a creative problem with the picture itself? How much do you think it really is a function of the publicity that's, that, that effectively was uh, it's all a factor because of the strike. It's all a factor. But I do think Disney has a creative issue here because they've essentially been running the playbook of let's replay the hits. Let's take our old movies and remake them in a modern fashion. Let's take a, our old rides and just make a, you know, point by point, pretty bland movie based on that. And what the audience seems to be saying this summer is they want their expectations to be challenged and to yeah. defy the expectations and to do something creatively interesting. And it's interesting because Disney had the opportunity with Haunted Mansion to make a version directed by Guillermo del Toro, who developed this property for many years. He's the Oscar-winning director of Shape of Water. He's done many extremely uh, creative and sort of edgy films. They chose not to do the Guillermo del Toro version of this film and instead went with a pretty paint-by-numbers ensemble comedy version of this film, and it didn't work. How much of this is a holdover from Bob Chapek versus holding Bob Iger, the other Bob, accountable? You cannot blame Bob Chapek for everything that happens creatively wrong at Disney. The guy was in charge of the company for a year. This project has been in development for many, many years at Disney. And even when Iger was not CEO and was still at the company, he was supposedly running the creative. So I don't think you can blame Bob Chapek for this. He did do a number of things with the distribution of Disney movies that arguably caused audiences to uh, expect them to be at home rather than in theaters. But I don't think you can blame Bob Chapek for the creative on a flop. Hey, Matt, what what's the backlog at Disney? What kind of films do they have coming up? Is there anything new or different? Is it more of the same? And I know all of this has been affected by, by, the, by the strikes, but what, what do they have that's different than what you just laid out? Uh, it's not a lot different. It's, you know, they have a Snow White remake that's, that's currently right. done and ready to come out. Um, they have a, a, a Marvel's film called The Marvel's, which is a sequel to Captain Marvel. And that is, you know, more of the same Marvel stuff. Um, they've got a couple of Avengers movies that are uh, that have been delayed by the strike. But there's not a lot on the Disney slate. They have another Avatar. Uh, there's not a lot of risk taking on the Disney slate. And what we just saw with both Barbie and Oppenheimer is that those movies were big risks. It was a hundred and fifty million dollar feminist, you know, manifesto disguised as a Barbie movie. And it was a hundred plus million dollar biopic based on, you know, three hours long and not based on IP or any explosions or anything except for the one explosion. But those are movies that are, are hitting the zeitgeist, not because they're based on well-known uh, Disney magic. Matt, let's talk about the strike, the state of play, where you think things really are, and, and the real impact. I mean, we're talking about the publicity impact on this particular picture. 
You saw Sony uh, move much of its slate now into 24. Are we expecting much more of that? What do they know that others don't? Are, uh, do, do they really think that this is going on through that period? Can you take us behind the scenes a little bit. Yeah, the conversation in Hollywood right now, I think everyone's looking at each other and say, okay, are we going to push? Are we going to not push? And the movies that were obvious um, sells, meaning they needed the stars to sell them. There was a Zendaya movie that was supposed to go uh, and premiere at Venice. Amazon and MGM decided they needed to push that movie because obviously you need Zendaya to sell your Zendaya big movie. They think there's a number of movies that Sony had that they just said, you know what? We're just going to push. They have a Denzel Washington movie, the Equalizer 3, that they have not pushed that is coming out in September. But beyond that, I think they were looking at the slate. They're looking at the, the landscape, and they're like, okay, even if this strike settles in September, which some people like myself think that it might, then you're still looking at a few weeks where they need to get all the, the paperwork done. These stars couldn't begin promoting until October, November, and that's the best case scenario. Worst case, we're looking at into 2024, and you've got to start pushing these movies.